This is not another talent show. This is all about beauty. Yes, you might say that beauty is either the product of nature or what we call talent. And the man I'm going to put the focus on today has a pretty amazing talent. Let me introduce to you the author of The Bone Collector, the one and only Jeff Redeemer. Uh, Jeff, you don't collect bones, do you? I myself do not collect bones, but I will tell you that I have a total of 14 dogs and they all collect bones. This is what life is all about. Wine, great food, friends, and books. Who is Lincoln Rhyme? Lincoln Rhyme, my main character, is a um, unique individual. He is, of course, a tetraplegico. He cannot uh, walk, but he has a mind that is like Sherlock Holmes. I created him because I wanted to make a hero who had to use his brain and his intellect to catch the bad guys. Mickey Spillane said people don't read books to get to the middle, they read books to get to the end. A meaning we authors have a responsibility to move the story forward very, very quickly. And that's exactly what I do in my books. Uh, they take place over maybe two or three days at the most. Uh, there are lots of twists and turns. I want my books to be uh, roller coasters or, uh, if I may, Ferraris or Maseratis rather than autobuses. So what is suspense? Suspense, to me, is getting in a car in a city you're not familiar with and never knowing where you'll end up or if you will. I've been as influenced by movies as I have by books ever since I was a little boy. I uh, remember going into films uh, paying 25 cents for a Saturday matinee. The fact that a movie is a very brief story told in a short period of time has influenced all of my books. I continue to go to movies all the time, TV shows. Uh, I love them as much as anyone. So Jeff, what is music for you? Music has always played an important part of my life. Um, I love the way a song requires the songwriter to tell a story in a very uh, concise way. More than that though, music is an inspiration for my books because I structure all of my books the same way I would approach a piece of music. You know, for years I've been involved in photography, in art, in poetry, in music. I think creativity is one of the most important things we can do. Whether you're a professional or an amateur, it just adds so much to your life. So, I've just created art. sports teams and I'm reminded of the bicycles behind me, quite works of art, aren't they? They look like they're made out of wood, quite something. Uh, that reminds me of my interest in sports, which is zero. I'd rather sit in a dark room at my computer and write stories than sweat at all. What are those places you're familiar with in the States, the places that are dear to your soul, both as a human being and as a writer, as a creative person? I'm a bit of a nomad. I've traveled and lived in many parts of the country. Uh, I grew up in Chicago, then lived in Manhattan, um, that's New York City, then in Washington, D.C., 
and now I spend a great deal of time in uh, North Carolina, a rural state. So I consider myself a, uh, frankly, a true American. And I've noticed that while you were answering this question, we're looking at all the people are passing by. What does that mean to you as a, as a writer? We're in uh, the middle of uh, Milan right at the moment and surrounded by easily uh, 2,000 people. I, as a writer, am very much a, um, I guess I would say, a voyeur. I'm fascinated by people. Uh, they inspire me to create my characters. And I'm always looking for uh, the way people look at things, what they do, what they shop for, how they interact with each other. Uh, that's why I enjoy uh, living a writer's life.